Hello, my name's Dr. Jason Zagami, and I'm going to be your lecturer for 2013 EDM Technologies Education. Now, looking at the comments so far on our course bulletin board, I can see, as usual, many students are not quite sure what Technologies Education, as a course, actually entails. It's not about teaching you how to use computers. In fourth year, we're going to be meeting again, and there we'll, you'll have a course called um, TPAC Capabilities, or Technology, Pedagogy, and Content Knowledge Capabilities. In this course, we're going to wrap up all the knowledge and skills that you've gained from using computing, you know, the educational use of computing, in all of your courses throughout your program. We used to have that course in first year where we'd teach things like how to use Word, how to use a web page, how to create a web page, how to create video, things of that nature. But it's been decided that you should already have that knowledge and capability in the main before starting your program of study, or that that would be developed through the various activities in all of your courses during your program of study. Now, if that's not the case and you're still struggling, still in a couple of years, but if you're really struggling with that, um, there are plenty of courses run by the library that will help bring you up to speed with the basics of the use of technology. Now, this course, what's it going to be involved? Well, the Australian curriculum, as you've probably heard about, has introduced a new learning area and it's called the Technologies Learning Area. And in that, there are two subject areas, just like geography, history, mathematics, etc. And these two subject areas are designer technology and digital technologies. Designer technology we've been teaching in schools for quite a while now. It involves projects and aspects of home economics, um, manual arts, various other um, traditional subject areas combined basically involving design challenges where students are creating solutions to real-world problems and developing those solutions. So that's been around for a bit and we're pretty okay with teaching that and getting you ready for that. But now we've got this new area called digital technologies. Now I've been quite involved with the design and development of this so I know a fair bit about it. That's why you're getting an introduction to it now. Now, digital technologies is involved with a whole new area of study. Hasn't been taught in schools before, or at least not in the comprehensive way it's going to be taught now. This will be the first time from foundation through to year 10 that students will be learning about computation and computing at a really deep fundamental level. All the way from the very first years of schooling, all the way through to year 10. And it'll involve every year level teaching some aspects of computer programming, for example, and a whole lot of other concepts and areas. Now, very few teachers are ready to, and prepared to teach that at the moment, so you're not alone in that respect. So I don't expect you all to be whiz-bang programmers, and probably it actually is rather concerning to all of you, that, um, or most of you, that you're going to have to learn how to do that. And not just learn it for yourself, but learn how to teach it to your students. So that's going to be a big part of this course. But it's nowhere near as scary as it seems. There's lots and lots of approaches we can take to it, lots of tools and technologies that can assist. And just as with design and technology, it can be one of the most engaging, fun and exciting areas of student schooling. Very few students remember the lessons they have on mathematics or English even, and things of that nature. Lots of them remember the projects that they do in designer technology and in digital technologies in the future, where the students get a chance to be creative and engaged and create real-world solutions to quite complex problems for their age levels. So, let's get into unpacking what this course is going to be about. And first, we're going to have a look at what's involved with some of these course websites that I've asked you to engage with and read about for before our first whole course discussion um, in the coming week. So here's the university website, and to get to our Learning at Griffith webpage, 
go into current students, click on learning at Griffith. Then you'll need to choose the particular course and it'll hopefully appear on the right. And there we are, 2013 EDN. And this is our Learning at Griffith or L, L at G website. Now on the website, you'll see a menu bar on the left with the Learning at Griffith website, our course website, which I'll show you in a little bit, and links to course discussion forums, tutorial discussions, task calendar, course profile, my marks and staff information. So on the main page, you'll see announcements. Now these announcements will also be emailed out to your um, university email address. If you don't check that email address regularly, I suggest that you go in to your Gmail, your university Gmail, and create a forwarding, which will automatically forward the email sent to your university email address to the email account that you use regularly. Underneath that, there are a list of tasks to be done. And you can click on these tasks and then you can indicate whether or not it's been started and whether, when it's been completed. So it's a good way of keeping track of how you're going in the course. And I can see that for all students as well and see if you're having difficulties or not. So please try to keep that up to date. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly up to date all the time, but it does give me a general overview of how you're going with the course material. To the right of that is the My Calendar. This indicates the various events that are occurring, and in particular, the tutorial discussions. Now, each week we run, at the moment, eight tutorial discussions, and you can sign up for those, and then join a session at the particular time. You can swap around as your um, needs require, but ideally you'll stick with one particular um, group that you can meet with regularly and have discussion about the course with. So the first thing on Wednesday we have our whole course discussion which I'll talk to about in a little bit and then later on Wednesday or on Thursday evening there are tutorial sessions that you can join. We also have a couple of other sessions, um, our on-campus workshops and off-campus workshops which we'll also talk about in a little while. But in particular at the moment, the tutorial sessions. So if it's coming up to 11 a.m. on the Wednesday, and that's the time when you've signed up to participate, you click on Launch Session, and it will start the process of the tutorial. Generally, it will only allow you to join up to half an hour before, so you shouldn't get too lost there. It will download a little plugin that needs to be run on your computer for the first time you've used using this. And sometimes things occur behind the screen, or in this case, you have to just run the little plugin. Java program going. This can all take a couple of minutes, so make sure you leave a few minutes before your session to be able to go to a tutorial discussion. Now we see Blackboard Collaborate starting. Again, it takes a little while. Connecting to the session. Recording in progress. It will tell you that the session is being recorded and you'll see various modules again. You'll see the list of who's in the actual session, um, probably your tutor and the other students. You've got a box at the top where you can chat to other students or chat to everyone else in the room. Also to the moderator, which will generally be your tutor. And also as other people join, you can chat individually to those in a back channel type system. You can also use little emoticons to indicate your uh, current state of um, mind. Now, other than chatting, which because there'll probably be a number of students in there at once, uh, it'll be the main form of communication, that whenever someone wants to speak, they can also use the talk button, 
which will then broadcast their voice if you've got a microphone attached and also the video button which will broadcast a video of yourself as I'll just demonstrate. And there's myself and remember you can then turn it off and also remember to turn off the talk button when you finish talking. Of course there can only be up to six people talking or using the video at any one time. Now the rest of the space is taken up at the moment with a whiteboard um, so you can use that to draw on it and indicate various things. Um, hopefully more appropriate than that. That you can also use it to share applications that are running on your computer or sharing websites. So if there's a particular website that's being discussed you can click on that. For example if we choose the course website which for those who don't know it is jason.sagami.info is where I put all of my course material and I can click on that and there will be a web page appear. We'll talk about this web page in a moment um, and if follow me is clicked then whenever anyone clicks on a link everyone else will see that page change that link. There are other tools that can be used such as loading PowerPoint presentations and things like that but that's the main communication tool that we'll be using for your tutorials. So I'm just going to close that now. So at the end of the session basically you just close the Blackboard Collaborate environment. If you miss a session or you want to review a session from the tutorials you can just go and click on the link to it and it should show the recording for that session. Other than that on the course website there will be some well the what's new section tells you what's been added recently but there will also be a to do section and an alert section. Now these will be populated when I add all of the various assessment tasks to the Learning at Griffith um, website and that's when you can go in and check your marks under my marks and see what's happening in terms of your assessment. Particularly important when you want to add um, items to, to be assessed and we'll discuss more about that in later sessions. So other than that there's the task, the calendar, the course profile, your my marks and staff information. The other main section of the Learning Griffith website that we'll be using is the course discussion forum. Here you can post messages. If it's a message just in general in terms of a question about the course uh, or about some information that we've been discussing please post it under general course discussion. Now instead of emailing me which is then where I'll just be giving a response just to yourself. I will give much more elaborate responses and quick responses to students who post questions to the general course discussion forum. I normally have a rule whereby individual emails I wait um, three days or so before I respond. Um, course discussion forum questions I will often respond sometimes within minutes depending upon what I'm actually doing at the time but certainly within a few hours um, and at most a day. So please post your questions to the general course discussion forum. Uh, that way we all get to see the responses to your questions and I'm not repeating myself to students who are asking the same questions but most importantly so that everyone gets to see the responses and questions that one student has normally other students will also have. Then there's also the student introduction section and we see at the moment we've got seven students who have introduced themselves and I'd like each of you to uh, post a small message just introducing yourself, um, something interesting about yourself and what you're in hoping to get out of doing this course. And a photo just so that we can all see what you look like. So here we'll have a look at Emma's
and down here we can see the actual message and we can click on that and see the actual photo she's added. Now, what you can do with the forum to make it a little bit easier, I'm just going back, is when you go into a forum, click on where it says subscribe. At the moment, I've already subscribed, so I see unsubscribe. But if you click on the subscribe, then any posts that are made to here will also be emailed to you. And it just makes it an easier way of uh, reading the posts. Of course, they'll come through your normal email system. Well, I'll actually go to your Griffith University email account, so make sure that's one is either forwarding to yours or you're checking it regularly. So to create a message, simply click on Create Thread. Put in a subject heading and the, the body of your message. And if you need to, you can attach um, other items to there. So that's pretty much the Learning at Griffith website. We also use a course website. So this website is basically just one page and as each week um, goes past, I'll archive it and you can see the previous weeks under past weeks. There'll be this video in the first section, the video presentation, that you should watch before each Wednesday. You should also do the readings for that week, again before the Wednesday whole course discussion, or the Wednesday morning. So for this week I've given you four different versions of the readings. There's the online interactive version where you just click on it on the web page and read through um, here. You can download the PDF. You can view the flipbook version of the PDF. I'll just open that up for you to show you that. Or you can download the iBook version, which you can read on an iPad or on a Macintosh computer with the iBook application installed. Now, if you really need to destroy the rainforest, you can print out the PDF and have it as a hard copy. But I would encourage you to try to get used to using on-screen viewing as much as you can. So the flipbook version looks like this and you can flip through the pages on the screen and it's a little bit more interactive than the PDF though it's not quite as easy to zoom in on the writing etc. So let's look at the PDF version. Uh, there we are. So this is just a series of pages that you can scroll down through and read the actual course content. The iBook version, rather similar. Just open that up. Um, again, you can flip through the pages. The iBook version is a little bit more interactive in that the video clips and so forth you can click on and will play directly in the document um, as opposed to having to open up a web page and go to those there. But we'll just use the uh, PDF version for today. So back to the web page. While this video will summarize what's in this document, um, you do need to read it to unpack it in a bit more detail. Of course, there will be bits that we'll gloss over um, in this discussion at the moment. Below that, we have the whole course discussion. If you start the video, click on the video, you'll see the countdown to when the discussion will take place. And at the moment we see it's going to occur in four days, nine hours, 58 minutes, and 10 seconds or so. At 9 a.m. on Wednesday, this will be live, and you'll see myself and a panel of other students on this video, where we'll take your questions and discuss the um, content for this week, which will be the um, these documents here that you will have read and prepared questions to ask about. So not a lot of content this week, we're just discussing the course and how it all fits together and how your assessment will go during the course. 
Now, as I said, we can have up to nine students, plus myself, so ten of us, um, on the panel each week. And we've got a few students already that have signed up, which is fantastic. And I'll be sending them out details about how to um, join the Google Plus Hangout. But please sign up. Um, not everyone will be able to sign up and do a panel discussion, so please get in quick. Um, and as a special bonus, it can count towards one of your assessment tasks. So it's a nice, easy way of um, getting part of your assessment done. Now, to sign up to these um, spreadsheets, you do need to click on the link below, and it will open up an online spreadsheet that you can just type in your name. Please check back a minute or so after you type it in, because if two people do type in at exactly the same time, it will overwrite each other, or overwrite one of them. Um, so just to make sure no one else has been typing it exactly when you were typing in, uh, it's good to check. Even if it's 30 seconds later, it's, it's just a nice, safe way. Then below that, we've got our tutorial discussion groups. And here you can be signing up to the various tutorials discussions. So there's eight of those available. Um, Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, and Wednesday early Wednesday evening, and then Thursday afternoon and evening. So hopefully you'll be able to attend at least one of those, or attend one of those sessions. Um, I guess in theory you could attend more than one, although that might be a bit of overkill. Um, but the tutorial sessions are available for you to talk to a tutor in a smaller group and discuss the actual content and concepts raised during the week. So that's it other than for this week or week one, I'm running a drop-in session uh, from four to five in G30. But this is really just covering the very, very basics of logging into Learning at Griffith, um, logging into the course website, uh, some really basics of using some stuff with YouTube and Google Docs. But the video clips below cover the same material that we'll be discussing. Um, and it's really just for those that have had very little experience at all with uh, digital technologies and need some additional assistance just getting started. You will be expected in the course to come up to speed yourselves with a lot of um, ICTs. Um, you, will be, you will be creating video clips and editing those and uploading those to YouTube and sharing um, online text documents, uh, Google Docs and things like that. I'll be giving you a little bit of assistance with that, but you will be expected to um, have those skills, or at least be developing those skills during the course as we go through. So that's the course website. Fairly simple and easy. And there's a link down the bottom to some other online learning tutorials that are run by the university. Uh, Introduction to online learning, if you're really, really unsure about online learning and what's involved and things of that nature, and you want a bit of additional support and assistance, you can join that course. It's an online course. So if you're really, really bad at online courses, I guess it's a bit of a challenge, but it will take you through a bit more gently than what we'll need to be able to progress through in this course. And there's also a link to some Google tools, which in particular will help you um, with some of the assessment tasks if you choose those. So let's go to the PDF and run through what we're talking about this week. If I can find it, there we are. So, as I mentioned before, this course is about preparing you to be able to teach technologies education. It's not necessarily about developing your own, um, what are called educational technologies or use of educational technologies. How to actually teach with technology is somewhat different to what students learn in the courses they're involved with that you'll be teaching them. So much of that will be saving until fourth year. But there's still plenty of things that you're going to learn as we go through, simply because in order to teach your students, you need to have some understanding of them yourself. So demonstrating an understanding of the key concept of technologies education, both design and technology and digital technologies, creating design challenges and computing challenges appropriate for different learning levels, using creative design processes to investigate and solve real world problems, um, creating resources and environments that will assist in teaching technologies education in school, and developing and engaging flexible learning experiences 
in project-based student-centered ICT enhanced environments. And you'll certainly get to experience that as we go through. Now, as an additional little bonus in doing the course the way we are, there's a whole area of education opening up for online teaching. And the latest area is primary schools. In fact, two of our tutors um, either were involved last year or it, and one is involved this year in actually teaching online. And both of them are early years primary teachers. So the idea that you won't ever teach online is quite a misnomer in this current world. And getting some skills and capabilities, while that's not the specific purpose of this course, um, keep in mind that as you're doing the course and the way you're doing it and the teaching that I'll be modeling in this course, you may be able to leverage and use in potential career paths. And given the, well, at the moment they're not doing direct recruitment into online courses, there's a huge need for it. And as it expands, um, drawing upon the capacity that exists with teachers in schools at the moment, there may be plenty of, or there may be some opportunities for employment that aren't traditional approaches into getting employment, particularly in primary years. Just something to keep in mind as we go through the things we're going to talk about in how you're going to learn in this course. So, a little bit of copyright information and stuff like that. Um, here we are, this is the myself and our tutors, and I'm going to let them do a quick little video introduction themselves. But as for myself, I've been a teacher or academic now for 20 odd years. Um, I taught in schools for 15 or so years. Um, in all sectors, I started off doing contract work for the state's um, system. Um, had some rather interesting and challenging schools that were very enjoyable at the time. I then did my very first six month contract replacing a, a teacher on maternity leave in a Catholic school. And then I was lucky to, enough to get a full-time appointment to St. Hilda's, which is an Anglican independent uh, private girls' school here on the Gold Coast. And I found a nice little niche in teaching technologies and also a bit of maths and a bit of science and a few other things as they come along. And then I was um, enticed to come to a school in Brisbane, another Anglican girls' school, um, St. Aidan's where I helped set up an online learning um, environment that was set up as a sort of, you know, fairly complex, but never mind. And I was lucky enough to teach there for oh, seven, about seven years. And during that time, I was able to win a number of um, awards, including a, a national award where I got to shake the hand of the um, federal education minister. And I think they gave me $10,000 for that award, which was Quite a nice little bonus. $10,000 for myself and $10,000 for the school to buy new technologies. So I've got a fair bit of experience in education and I continue that in my teaching here now at university where I've been doing this for seven years now. But I stay very involved in um, school-based education. I do a lot of research. Um, my main research areas just at the moment are around um, be, bring your own device computing into schools and also the use of games and, and tr the introduction of computer games into schools. But other, uh, other things about myself, i past president of the Queensland Society for Information Technology and Education, which is a group of teachers who look at how to use computers in schools. And I'm the current president of the Australian College of Educators for the Gold Coast. So a few other little things, and you can, if you really want to find out more about me, you can go to my website, uh, which is off the course website, um, jason.zagami.info. So our tutors. First off, we have Damien Key, or Dr. Damien Key. Damien Key, I've been working with teachers and students with predominantly robotics, but all sorts of technology-related um, devices for the last 10 or 15 years. Now we have Michael Berry. Hi, I'm Michael Berry. Um, I have a lot of experience in working with design and technology, um, including um, in being involved in the Queensland syllabus and um, the writing of the Australian technology syllabus. Um, and I really look forward to working with you to unpack the ideas and concepts within technology. And Fiona Banjo. 
Hello, I'm Fiona Banger. I'm a Year One teacher at a uh, Gold Coast local uh, state school. Um, I'm passionately interested in digital technologies in early years classrooms. Looking forward to meeting you. And Jenny Futrell. Hello, I'm Jenny Futrell. I'm a primary school teacher and I'm currently working with Project 600, which is an online mathematics course. I'm looking forward to working with all of you in the technologies education course. So that's the teaching staff for this course. And we're going to guide you on your adventures in learning about digital technologies and designer technology. Let's have a little look about how that's going to occur. First off, there's these lecture presentations. Um, I used to give these as lectures where we'd sit in a big lecture hall and you guys would all sit there and I would talk at you and show up lots of slides and little images and you'd pretend to take notes and check your Facebook accounts. But the idea is that this format is basically exactly the same. Um, you can still ask questions and in fact it's probably easier for you to ask questions. You can think about those questions more thoughtfully, um, consider them in the context of the whole lecture as we go through it and then send those questions to me or more especially ask them at our weekly discussion group or to your tutors at the tutorial discussions. But I know many of you are social and you want to actually engage with this material in a collaborative way and that's certainly possible. Um, gather together as a group on campus and watch the presentation. You can book study spaces in the library or find a common area in a computing space or one of the little rooms off the computer labs. Um, to watch the, these videos you just need any computer connected to the internet and you can then have discussion about them as you go through, pause them as you need to, take notes and engage with the actual material in much more depth than could normally happen in a more traditional lecture. But you don't have to do that on campus. You could do it off campus. You could go to a coffee house, well that might be a bit noisy, but you can go to someone's house or find a nice quiet space somewhere and go to the local library. Um, but there's plenty of places where you can go and have the same sort of experience. Now if you want to be really adventurous, you could run your own Google Hangout. You can play the video and share that across the whole group. And as you watch the video, you can see each other in the little video stream, as you'll see for our whole course discussions, and you can discuss it online. Or, of course, you can do it individually, where if you just want to watch it by yourself, take your own notes, prepare your own questions for the whole course discussion, that's also just as equally valid and fine. So there's various ways of engaging with the lecture presentation. But I do really encourage you to find some way that you can do that regularly. It's really, really hard, as tempting as it may be, to wait until week seven and then think, oh, I've now got seven lectures to watch. You're not going to engage well with the course if you let things pile up. That said, of course, you do have the flexibility that if you do have to miss one week or so, that you can then catch up. They're all recorded videos. All of our discussion sessions and um, tutorial sessions are recorded. So in the times when you really can't make it, and I fully understand that there may be times when that occurs, you'll be able to still engage with the course. So then there's our whole course discussions. These are each Wednesday at 9 a.m. And we'll have the presentation with uh, myself and up to nine students. Sometimes I bring in a guest speaker, which means we're gonna lose a student or so, but generally it'll be nine students and myself. And we'll take your questions from the rest of the um, audience who can ask them live as they're watching the video stream of us talking about things. So really it's quite um, informal and flexible. I do ask that the students on the panel have actually done their readings and tried to do a little bit of study into what we're going to be discussing so that they can do so with a bit of confidence. Um, but I won't be letting you hang on a really tough question. Any tough questions I'll look after. But it's really great if you can have a vibrant discussion and challenge the issues and the concepts that we'll be putting forward. This is university. You are expected to be thinking at a high level and to be challenging what you're being taught. 
I will be presenting things from one particular perspective. It's a perspective that's worked very well for me, but it may not work well for everyone. I try to pre present a balanced perspective on things, but I do have my own preferences and my own biases, and it's great to have a discussion whereby those things are challenged. Okay, now when you do the Google Hangouts, um, if you're on the panel, there will be a few other little extra things you've got to do. You've got to make sure you've created a special Google Plus account. Now it can't be your university Gmail account, unfortunately. The university hasn't enabled Google Plus, which allows you to use Google Hangouts um, just at the moment. So you will either need to use your own personal Gmail account or simply create a new one for use during this course. And if you're doing that, I really encourage you to go in and create a forwarding email um, address to whichever email account you do regularly check. And I think I'll put up a video showing you how to do that because it's quite a really simple thing to do, but it can save a lot of angst um, if you've got an email account that I'm sending emails to, but you're not checking. Okay, so again, for the whole group um, discussion, you can gather together in groups on campus or off campus and watch those as they occur live. You will need an internet connection to be able to um, watch the session and to be able, able to ask questions. But it's normally quite a um, nice participatory engaging environment that we have in those discussions. Although it does mean you've got to actually come along with some questions. Okay. Next, we have our tutorial groups. Um, generally, most of them are also on Wednesday, although we've got a couple on Thursday as well, in case you've, you're busy on Wednesday. Now, these, we won't be using Google Hangouts um, because many of the sessions will have more than the 10 students. We wanna make sure everyone can participate. And also to show you just another technology, um, one that's used an awful lot in Education Queensland Schools, the Learning at Griffith Online Conferencing Tool, or Blackboard, um, or Blackboard Collaborates a tool, but the Blackboard environment, which is what Learning at Griffith uses, is also used by Education Queensland. Um, and so it's good experience to get to be familiar with using that environment. Um, certainly if you go into an Education Queensland School, you will be expected to be very familiar with that environment. Um, of course, a lot of their course material is placed on that. So we will be using the Learning at Griffith um, web online conferencing tool, which I've already shown you. Now they will be recorded and you can access those afterwards to review or if you've missed the session. We've talked about the course content in iBook and PDF formats and make sure you have a look at those before each discussion. So before Wednesday mornings. Now there are a couple of other recommended texts. These are not texts that you have to have. Um, I may mention things in them as we go through, particularly in our last couple of weeks, but they're not ones that are required for any of the assessment or for your learning. But they do provide really interesting different perspectives on particularly designer technology education, but also some aspects of digital technologies. So they're great texts to have if you want to explore things in more depth. Now, not everything is best taught online. I really like online education. I think there's lots, got huge numbers of advantages, but there are some things that just don't work particularly well online. At least not yet. We're still working on things. So the first things are things like robotics. Um, yes, we could get you all to go and buy some robotic kits. They're about $150 each and do things like that. But that's just probably a little bit too much of an expectation. So we're getting you all together on weeks five and six, and you have your on-campus workshops that you signed up for when you enrolled in the course. So there'll be particular sessions. Now you really do have to just attend those sessions that you signed up for, because um, we get too many students, we can't cope with, we've only got so many kits. Um, but we'll be exploring some specific technologies such as 3D printing, um, some more complex aspects of programming, uh, robotics, and these makey-makey electronic interface kits. So that's normally a fun day. You get about 
it's two hours in the workshop and we go through a whole lot of interesting activities that you can do with your students when you get out into schools. Now these will not be recorded though, so if you do miss them, um, if you can't make the session that you signed up for, you can join into another session, but it's only the exception because, as I said, we only have a certain number of kits and um, we can't cope with just too many students in any particular workshop. We also have a professional development um, workshop that you can go to in week three. Now, I've organised this with the local chapter of QSite and they're having a um, professional development day on Saturday the 22nd of March at Musgrave Hill State School. So that's about 150 metres or 200, well, maybe 300 metres from the university heading back towards the beach. Um, there was, is a small cost for that to cover the lunch and things of that nature. Um, but as I mentioned with your being part of the whole group discussion, um, this is another activity where you can get assessment, can count towards your assessment. And I'll talk about that next. Finally, as I mentioned before, for those that are really struggling, there's a drop-in session on Monday uh, from 4 to 5 in G30, 2.15. Only for the very, very basics, I hope to see no student there. But if there are those of you that are really struggling, um, I will be available then to take you through the really basics of logging in and getting on to things and creating a Google account, stuff like that. Okay, so what's this course going to involve? Week one, we're doing our course introduction. So I'm not introducing too many concepts about the, the actual content of the course this week. We're just making sure that you understand what's involved. Of course, it is a little bit complex, um, a little bit different to the more traditional university courses, but hopefully you'll see some of the advantages um, that they will have towards your learning. So week two, we're going to focus on the technologies education as a whole. Um, week three, the design and technology subject. Now we won't be covering the years nine and ten aspects, the sort of middle or oh, yeah, lower secondary subject uh, aspects of the of the subjects. We're just going to focus on the F to eight. Um, then we're going to focus in on design thinking as a particular way of thinking and getting students to think in a particular mindset. Then week five, we're going to focus on the digital technology subject. And then we're going to follow that up with a session on computational thinking, which is a particular way we have to get students to think in terms of computing. Then we've got two weeks focusing on programming. Of course, that's an area where it is a bit challenging for you to come up to speed with, but it's an area that you will need to gain some capability in. And finally, we're going to finish off with a session on making in the classroom. And this is looking at the latest developments in terms of make affairs and um, a whole lot of other new approaches to design and technology education that's occurring around the world. So each week there will be a video and a booklet to read, and they'll be available on the course website by Monday morning of that week. Okay, the thing you all want to know about is assessment. Now, again, I do things a little bit differently in this course. We have two assessment items, or two parts to the assessment. The first is an assessment of your effort, the log of learning activities. And it's based on completing tasks and quizzes, and it's not determined by criteria. Now this is pretty rare at university level. Um, it took a bit of convincing to get this involved, or to get this included, but as you'll see, it's about completing activities. In particular, there are activities that you can do at home um, or in your own time and spend some time on, and it involves going through a process we call learning by assessment, or assessment for learning, where the learning occurs through doing assessment tasks. And then there's going to be an assessment of your capability. And this is where you're going to uh, create a portfolio of your learning. And it's based on um, more traditional measures against a set of criteria that your tutors will assess. 
Now, I randomize the tutors, so you won't be necessarily being assessed by your tutor, and certainly for the various items in your portfolio, you probably won't be assessed by the tutor that you've been spending most of your time with. That said, your tutors will certainly be able to assist you in stretching your conception of what you can achieve in your portfolio of learning and helping guide you through those assessment activities. Now your log of learning activities is to be completed by weeks, end of week six and your portfolio of learning by the end of week nine. So let's see what they involve. So the first one, your log of learning activities, it's made up of four quizzes. These are online quizzes, each of 5%, giving you a total of 20% and up to six completion activities, each of which can contribute up to 5%, giving you a total of 30. So 50% of your marks can come from these activities. Let's see what they involve. First off, there's the quizzes. So there's going to be a quiz for each of the um, topics listed there. So basically, they're drawn from the booklets for those weeks. Um, there'll be a practice quiz, based upon this introductory material, which won't count. The other um, quizzes you can take, but you can only do, well, you can do more if you want, but they won't count. Um, I take the first four quizzes that are completed, other than the introductory one, and the marks that you get on those contribute towards your 20%. Now, it won't really make an awful lot of sense until you've done the practice quiz, but generally it's about 20 or 30 questions. They're all multiple choice. Well, some can be matching and um, short answer, things of that nature. But they're all self-marked by the computer. And that will determine how you go with the quizzes. Good thing is you get to see the results fairly quickly. But you can't do makeup ones. And if you make mistakes, I'm afraid, unless... It's really exceptional circumstances. Um, you don't get to do them again. So you do need to make sure you've got a good internet connection. You're not going to be interrupted. You're not going to press the wrong buttons and say, whoops, I pressed the wrong buttons and it stopped working and all that sort of stuff. You've got the practice quiz to uh, make those mistakes. Um, but for the other four real quizzes, I do expect you to do them as professionally as possible. Now, there is a bit of an honor system with doing the quizzes. There are plenty of ways of cheating. I really encourage you not to do that. The quizzes are fairly simple. They're not really, really high stakes. They're open book. You can have your computer on. You can have access to all your resources and so forth. But I do expect you to do the quiz. Um, there are some technologies I use that can actually tell whether or not the same person has done the quizzes. Um, there's a whole lot of keystroke analysis and things like that. That it, There are ways of um, detecting cheats um, doing online quizzes. I hope we don't get any instances of that. So I've made it fairly easy in terms of doing the quizzes. There's not a huge number of questions. There's not a huge amount of time to spend on them. And it's all open. So please don't abuse that. The other activities. Now these are completion activities. Now you can do up to six of these and they've each got generally five aspects on them which you get one point for each aspect which gives you the five percent. If you miss out a couple of the aspects you may get lower points um, and then lower percentage. Now for these you'll generally upload a video to Learning at Griffith, well, sorry you'll upload a link to a YouTube video that you've created. So you need to create the video and then upload it to YouTube. Now again, there's a, a web, um, a video on the front page of the course website that shows you how to create a video. Um, you can even edit it online in Google Video. Um, so it's a fairly simple process, but you will need to spend a little bit of time preparing your videos particularly as they can only be three minutes. And I'm pretty strict on the three minutes. I stop watching after the three minutes. So you do need to trim them down, but that's good practice um, for creating your video responses. 
So let's have a look at what some of them can be. Now, uh, the first thing is you do need to choose three from designer technology and three from digital technologies, just so there's a balance. But there are two that can count for either. So the first two, as we mentioned a little bit before, if you do, if you participate as a whole course discussion member, you can use that to count as one of your activities. So sign up and be on the panel. Contribute at least one new fact about the topic being discussed. Ask at least three questions. Respond to at least one question during the session and one question after the session. And that counts as one completion activity. Next one is the professional development workshop. So come along to the Saturday workshop, get an attendance certificate, post some, a comment about the um, event to the course discussion forum, post a response to another, comment, another student's comment, post a photo. So you do need to take a digital photo along to the, uh, a digital camera along to the event to take a photo, and post a comment about another student's photo. So another nice, simple way of um, contributing to your assessment um, activities. So let's look at some of the other ones. Doing an egg drop. This is a design and technology activity. So producing a video about how you've developed a solution to safely protect a raw egg dropping four meters onto a hard surface. Um, during the course I'll show you some videos about how students have done that approach and the different design challenges they've used to um, achieve that solution. Now you do need to show or describe in the video your design process of how you've come up with a solution to the problem and then try it out and then look at how it can be improved and then show um, your solution after that uh, reflection on or after that evaluation of the initial design. And finally you also have to describe a little bit about how this would contribute to students learning in the design and technology curriculum. Pretty simple but it's something you I need to get you thinking about as you do these activities. And again, three minutes going through the design process, which you'll be learning about in week three, I think, or two or three. No, week three. Another one is a puppet show. Again, doing a little puppet show for at least three puppets. Um, some backgrounds, voices, sound effects, and scenery. And again, the design process you went through, how you improved upon your initial design, and how it would relate to the curriculum. Creating a kite, same process, now this one has to fly. Creating a tower, as high as you can go with 50 sheets of newspaper. Very common task we use with students in the classroom um, and it's a great challenge particularly with group work. Unfortunately you do have to do all these tasks individually. Um, but if you do a little bit of research, you'll find lots of solutions that exist out there and approaches to doing these tasks on the internet. Creating ice cream. In this case, you have to use ice cream created by ice and salt. And there's various um, YouTube video clips and recipes for doing that. But it's another activity we often use with students in the early years classrooms. Uh, but you've got to go through a design process to try and make um, some interesting flavors and ice creams and test them out with some real people. So that's the design and technologies ones. I may be adding a couple more in there to, as we go through the course, but that's enough to get you started. Now we've got some digital technologies ones. First one is to um, develop and test an algorithm for doing something more efficiently that involves at least 20 steps. So it might be how you get to university. It might be how you prepare dinner. It might be how you um, go out dancing. Okay, there could be a whole range of different things that you do that involve a series of steps, at least one choice, and at least one repetition, or what we call a loop or iteration. Um, so you come up with an algorithm for doing something. Then you look at how it can be improved and modify the algorithm. Um, so that's, again, a, quite a simple task that it can teach you a lot about the fundamentals of computer program. Another one, this involves use of digital imagery, where you create a video of how you've created a photograph 
that includes yourself, um, either a photo of you as a young child next to a photo of you um, today in the same pose and hopefully the same sort of um, clothing, or a location. Um, so if you've got a photo of something of a location in the past, go and take another photo from exactly the same position um, and then superimpose those and combine them into one photo uh, where half of it shows the um, previous photo and half shows the new photo. And again, I've given you some links there to see what those involve. Next one is safe travels. This is using some databases, so using the crime info map. Um, have a look at how you get to university and see if you can find the safest way of getting here. And then using Google Maps and the Street View, create a, what's called a hyperlapse, which will create a, a video of the pathway you've chosen to go from your home to the university. But again, you do your first trial of that, you look at how it can then be improved, you modify it, and you report on how that process has occurred and how it relates to the digital technologies curriculum. Next one, happy birthday. This is where you create a celebration banner. So this is a printed banner. Um, it has to be at least three meters long. So it's not a digital banner. It's not a, although create it digitally on the computer and then you print it out. But it's, you've got to work out ways then of printing a large continuous um, picture. But there's various ways of doing that in Microsoft Office and other tools. Um, but to make it a bit more challenging, you've got to include a few additional things. You've got to include students' um, birth date in binary. So you've got to work out binary or have a look online and find a binary converter and see what that turns out for you. Um, you've got to create a digital avatar. So if you're not sure what an avatar is, it's a, a picture of your student, like a cartoon picture or something that represents the student. You've got to include a QR code that's linked to a song. Um, we'll be talking about QR codes during the course, but they're, well, again, do a Google of QR codes. Um, do a Google of making QR codes. It's fairly easy to make um, and link to some sort of birthday song or appropriate song for someone's birthday. But again, you've got to go through the process of initially designing this, trying it out, producing it, then looking at how it could be improved and going through that process and relating it to the design or the digital technologies curriculum in this case. Next one, memory lane. Produce a video of how you've created a timeline. Now this timeline is digital. There's various tools, um, Dippity, Tiki Toki, My Histro, or Time Toast. Um, and along this digital timeline, you'll have a series of pictures about various events in your life. Um, and see how that then provides representation of your life. Then you can refine that and improve upon it, show your final um, solution, and then how that relates to the digital technologies curriculum. Now, for all of these, you're doing a video of your process. Now, um, again, I guess I'll, I'll put up a, a little video clip of how to do this, but using exactly the same technology as what I'm doing now for you, you take a screen capture of what's occurring on your screen and you record that as video. And then you can edit that into a video editor and you can include voiceovers and other things um, to make it more addressing the ass assessment criteria. So you're going to get, be getting to do a fair bit of video editing during this course and presenting it in that way. But the advantage is you don't have to do an awful lot of writing. So it's a different way of being assessed and presenting assessment. Um, some students prefer more writing and there are some tasks and particularly the next set of tasks that will um, cater for that. But hopefully you'll also learn a little bit about how to use video editing um, with your students. Last one, windmills of your mind. Um, here you need to create a, um, a circle where students' names are presented in binary, and in the middle you have a picture of yourself, or sorry, of your, your names in binary, and then a picture of yourself created out of ASCII symbols. 
Um, now these are the various symbols on your keyboard. Now you don't have to do it all yourself, there are plenty of online tools and I'll provide a couple of links to those if you can't find them yourself that will assist you in creating pictures of yourself out of ASCII and there are also plenty of tools that will help you um, convert your name into binary. But the challenge will be um, combining those in some sort of graphics program to present it as a nice little poster of yourself with your name as a circle and your picture of yourself in the middle. Okay, so that's the assessment tasks for the first task, your learning activities. Your second activity involves creating a portfolio of your learning. Now this relates a little bit more directly to your preparation to teach the course, but these courses. So you're going to produce two work outlines or unit of work outlines. Now, if you've done unit of work um, profiles or presentations before, this is an abridged version. You're not going to do one in great detail. Certainly you're not going to do something like lesson plans and um, filling in forms and all the little boxes that go into those forms. Um, there's some very specific things I want you to address and you just have to address those. But in this case, you're going to go through the challenge in more detail. So you can pick any of the challenges uh, for any year level and develop an outline of how you would teach the challenge using a project-based learning pedagogy. But you also have to demonstrate how you have completed the challenge yourself to a level expected of a tertiary student, even if the unit is for young students. So yes, you're going to provide a brief document on how you would teach it, using challenge-based learning, but you also have to do the task. Now these tasks are more involved than the ones you would have done for your first set of learning activities. So you're going to submit this as a Google Doc, um, which you'll make public, that then I'll be able to read, or your tutors will be able to read and mark. Now it's an outline for a 10-hour unit of work um, for and no more than a thousand words each. Um, you, can, or you can also include a, a video of up to three minutes for each challenge showing the processes you've used. So one video for the um, design and technology work outline, unit of work outline, and one video of up to three minutes for the digital technologies unit of work outline. The three things that you need to show, one, the learning activity the students will undertake and the time to be spent on them. And in this, we'll be looking at assessing your innovation and coming up with engaging, exciting, innovative learning activities. Second, you need to show some knowledge and understanding of the processes and production skills that the unit will develop in students. So this is your interpretation of the curriculum. Have you correctly interpreted the curriculum? And are you teaching the students things that are in the curriculum? Or are you teaching them something else? Or saying that you're going to teach something and not teaching it? Or teaching something and not saying you were going to teach it. And thirdly, how you're going to assess these things. And that's how you analyze the tasks and the concepts in those tasks and come up with an approach to assessing whether or not students have learnt the things that you've said they're going to learn. So that's the three points you need to show in your unit outline. So they have criteria and I will be providing criteria for each individual activity, but that's the general criteria for the moment. So here's some options that you have. So first off, some F to, F to 2 design and technology challenges. Students getting wet walking to school, design, create and test an innovative solution that will keep them completely dry in any weather. Now, at the moment you don't know what a design challenge involves. so. We're going to go through and you're going to learn about design challenges and the various steps and processes that make up um, that sort of approach. But there's lots of other ones. Year three and four, um, you, have, you have no yard to plant and grow food. Design and create an innovative hydroponic garden out of recycled materials and successfully grow something. Um, you've got creating a bridge out of patapop sticks. 
um, an elastic powered vehicle, um, a sun safe um, play area, a formal um, dress or suit for going to a formal uh, event made out of plastic bags, um, a popular meal using only Australian bush foods, etc. So let's have a look at some for you later years for design and technology. Um, designing and testing an innovative new musical instrument. Um, creating and testing an innovative aquaculture system for growing um, seafood. Um, convincing someone about an issue. So creating a campaign to convince someone, such as the Clean Up Australia campaign. Uh, designing and testing an innovative skylight system for a multi-storey dwelling. So these are various approaches. Generally, you'll create a model or a prototype because it needs to be something that you can then test and see if it actually works. But we're going to be talking a lot more about design challenges in the weeks ahead. For digital technologies, uh, creating a photo mosaic, um, creating a picture or an infographic or picture graph, doing some concept mapping or mind mapping, creating some robotic devices, um, a Rube Goldberg sequence. Um, if you're not sure what that is, do a YouTube video search for that and you'll get some very interesting solutions. Uh, doing some online surveys, creating a semaphore system, a Morse code system, a database on computer games, um, a little scratch program for a guessing game for Asian, an, an Asian language, um, a slideshow that tells an interactive story, what else we got? A uh, little simple computer game, um, some digital artwork, an adventure game, a computer animation, a fairy tale um, in 3D. What do we got? Some SQL information systems, getting a bit more complex, um, an educational website, or a computer game, or computer simulation. So they're the various activities. Now, some of them you might think you can do at the moment. Of course, you haven't seen lots of the examples that you'll be shown during the course. And as we go through the different processes that underlie these, because these are just the challenges. The actual design process um, that underpins these is quite formalized. And you need to go through um, that in some detail when you're creating solutions to these. Um, this is what I go through here now, and I address the various requirements. Much of this won't make a lot of sense to you until after we've done those sections of the course that explain how to do these design challenges. But these are the aspects that you'll be assessed on when you're doing them. Four main criteria. Um, the innovation for the task that you've set for the students. The knowledge and understanding of the processes that you understand from the curriculum documents. Um, how you've got you've chosen to go about assessing and then an articulation and presentation mark on how well you've presented the material in terms of your document and your video. Now these are design challenges again you need to go through how you've actually gone about doing it yourself and that will involve at least going through um, twice once to go through and then identify how it can be improved and then the second um, run through the design process to show how you've implemented and made adjustments to your design based upon what you learnt from the evaluation. So finally, to help you get your head around all the things that are involved in the course, there's a weekly to-do to guide. Remember, you do have your calendar on learning at Griffith and things like that, but this is the summary. So the two main things happening this week, the drop-in session, and then on Wednesday or Thursday, um, the whole course discussion and the tutorial discussions. You see in week three we've got the professional development workshop, week five and week six we've got the on-campus workshops, end of week six you've got your log of learning activities due, end of week nine you've got your portfolio of learning due. And to go through in a little bit more detail each week um, you can see the summary again just covering things a little bit more explicitly about what's involved 
for your week. So that's the course in a nutshell. Um, I hope that you go through and look at this material in some depth. Um, while I've explained things reasonably comprehensively, um, you will have missed various aspects and you need to go through and read those and come to our discussion group ready to ask questions. Now, certainly you need to ask questions about what we've been discussing, but I also really encourage you to ask questions about other aspects of technologies education that you may come across in various readings that you do on your own, on the recommended readings, or various other aspects of research that you involve yourself. Particularly as we start going into more depth in terms of our exploration of digital technologies and design of technology and the various curriculum documents that are associated with that, there's going to be lots and lots of links that you can pursue and investigate into greater depth and do your own particular readings into areas of interest that you have in various aspects of technologies education. Now, it may be in a particular year level, um, the particular early years or the upper primary or various projects that you've been involved in. Of course, we really want to have a rich discussion during our discussion times, both the whole course and also in your tutorials. Now, you all will have had some experience with design and technology, um, be it through home economics or graphics or metalwork or woodwork or industrial design or the various other subjects that it goes by. Or back into primary school, you would have had various projects you would have been involved in and engaged with. So these are all rich discussions that you can bring to our conversations. So I really hope to hear lots of exciting stories that you have about the various experiences you've had with the topics we're going to be discussing. But also things that you may have seen on practicum experiences and other exciting things that you may have come across in various project websites and competition websites and things that you'll learn about during the course. So don't just limit yourself to the questions uh, based upon the content that I've asked you to read. Certainly that's a starting point and a focus of our discussions. But this is university and we really want you to be thinking beyond just those constraints and exploring what is, what is possible in technologies education. Because it's not just for teaching. Many of you may go off to other careers. Um, certainly online education has got lots of opportunities outside the schooling sector. But also just in terms of design and technology, there's lots of skills that you'll develop in your program and your courses that will be able to assist you in other career options. But of course, we do focus on teaching and in particular on the primary years in this course. And we'll hope to have some really rich discussions, both for myself and you, yourselves in our whole group and with your tutors and their own particular sets of experiences and specialities in the tutorial groups. So I look forward to seeing you all on Wednesday morning online. And I really hope to see a full group in our panel and for you to engage with your tutors in those sessions. Bye for now.